Hi class, as we move into chapter 16, uh, we will be focusing on analyzing and interpreting data. Uh, the first thing that we're going to be looking at in 16.1 today is analyzing data using measures of center. If you take a look at the top of page 1070, problem number one says, put me in coach. When you analyze a set of data, you often want to describe it numerically. One way to numerically describe a data set is to use a measure of center. A measure of center tells you how the data values are clustered or where the center of the graph is located. So why don't you go ahead and make sure you highlight that definition. There are three ways to describe how a data set is centered. We're going to focus on the mean, the median, and the mode. Hopefully these are terms that you have all heard of before. The mode is the data value or values that occur most frequently in a set of data. Uh, one quick reminder is that just like the definition says you can have more than one mode in a set of data. The median is the middle number in a data set when the values are placed in order from least to greatest. Now the rest of the definition very important as far as figuring out what the median is when a data set has an odd number of data values in the set, you can determine which number is exactly in the middle. If there's an even number of data values, then the median is calculated by adding the two middle numbers and then dividing by two. So what I want you to take a look at is number one. Go ahead and answer uh, letter A and letter B with your group members about the Olive Street Middle School girls basketball team. I'll give you a couple minutes. Go ahead. So in reading the problem situation for number one, Coach Harris must determine which of the following three players should get more playing time in the championship game. Uh, if you look at letter A, the mode for the number of points scored by each player, uh, Josephine's mode would be 12, and there was no mode for Shelley or Shanice because you did not see a certain number occur more frequently than any other. Uh, for letter B, uh, the median... Uh, for each player then, uh, Josephine would have been 12, Shelly would have been 9, and Shanice would have been 12 and a half. Now just remembering back to the definition as far as finding the median, uh, each of the girls had uh, six numbers in their set of data. So it was an even set of data, so you would have had to add the two middle numbers up and divide by two. Go ahead and turn to the top of page 1071, and based off of uh, letter A and letter B, go ahead and answer uh, letter C up at the top as well. For letter C, the median is actually going to be the better measure of center for the coach to use. If you would end up using the mode, uh, you actually wouldn't even factor Shanice into the decision. She would be eliminated. But in looking at the median, she actually has uh, the greatest number, the greatest median. So the median would be the better measure of center to use for letter C. Uh, let's continue moving on. Go ahead and answer number two with your group members. I'll give you a couple minutes. For number two, you would have to disagree with Lamar. Um, unfortunately, Lamar forgot to put the numbers in numerical order before calculating the median. Uh, one of the most important things to remember when you're trying to figure out that measure of center. Uh, so if he did do it correctly, <clears throat> uh, you should have 4, 5, 6, 9, and 10 in numerical order uh, from that set of data that he had. And you would see that the median or the middle number would be 6. Let's finish up on page 1071. Underneath number two it says, Previously you learned about two measures of center, the median and the mode. There is a third measure of center that can describe the values in a data set. This measure of center is based upon establishing a balance point. So take a look at the example that they give us here. They want us to analyze the two stacks of cubes. It says, If you were to create two equal stacks of cubes, you would subtract two cubes from the greater stack and add the two cubes to the lesser stack. In doing so, you have created two stacks of equivalent amounts. So if we turn to page 1072, this is what you are going to be doing with your group members now. You're going to analyze each stack of cubes that are shown. You're going to make each stack have the same number of cubes. 
Then you're going to describe what operations you performed for each stack to have the same number of cubes. And then finally, you're going to sketch your model of all the stacks with an equal number of cubes. And then finally, it says, uh, don't forget to draw an equivalent line to show the stacks have equal cubes. So go ahead and do uh, letter A on page 1072 and letter B on page 1073. So here is what letter A should have looked like. Uh, in order to create four equivalent stacks of cubes, uh, what you had to do first was subtract two cubes from the stack of six cubes and make sure that you added them to the first stack. Uh, then the second thing that you had to do was subtract one cube from the stack of five cubes and add it to the second stack. And that result is going to give you four cubes in each stack. Uh, if you take a look at letter B, in order to create four equivalent stacks of cubes, uh, first you would have to subtract three cubes from the stack of ten cubes and add them to the first stack. Then the second thing you would have to do is subtract two cubes from the remaining seven cubes in the last stack and add those cubes to the second stack. And this is going to result in all of your stacks having five cubes. Uh, we will skip number four down at the bottom of page 1073. Uh, so go ahead and turn to page 1074 and we'll start up with problem number two. In problem number two titled A Balancing Act, it says that you can also represent quantities on a number line and create equivalent values. So much like we did with the uh, stacks back in problem number one, now we're going to use a number line in order to try and figure out a balance point. Uh, if you take a look at the example, it says notice each x in the box. These x's represent 2 and 6 on the number line. So you can uh, see those right there. Uh, it says, so 2 is moved to the right from 2 to 4, and in order to maintain balance, you must move 6 to the left from 6 to 4, and therefore you would find that the balance point is 4. Underneath the example box, it says, when you are attempting to create a balance on a number line, you must move data values on each side in a balanced manner. In other words, <clears throat> if you move a value to the right a certain value, then you must also move a value to the left a certain value. You can move a data value to the left and right as much as you like, as long as you do the inverse to another data value in a set of data. So if you look back up at the example, because they moved 2 to the right, they had to move 6 to the left, because you were adding 2 and then you are subtracting or taking 2 away from the 6 in order to maintain balance on that number line. I think it shows it pretty clearly. 2 plus 2 is going to give you 4. 6 minus 2 is going to give you 4. Uh, like it says uh, with our little helper here over to the left, you have to make sure that you use inverse operations, and we should already know that inverse means opposite. If you take a look at number one, it asks, what do you think that the black triangle represents? Um, the black triangle is going to represent the value in which the number line is balanced. So you can see then uh, up in the example that it is indeed underneath the number four because that's what the balance point is. When you have all the points at the same value after moving data values in a balanced manner, the number line is balanced. The value where the number line is balanced is called the balance point. The example you analyzed involved two data points. It says that you can also determine the balance point of a number line with more than two data values. And that's what we'll take a look at uh, on the next page. So if we take a look at the top of page 1075, number 2, it asks us to describe the steps Catherine used in her method to determine the balance point of the data set. It says label the balance point in step 3. So let's just kind of walk through step by step and take a look at Catherine's method. Uh, you can see in uh, just the first number line example that each of those X's represent the data set 2, 3, 8, and 11. So if we take a look at Catherine's first step, she added 4 to the number 3, and whatever you do 
to one uh, piece of data in the data set. Remember, you have to do the inverse operation to another. So she subtracted 4 from 11. And in doing that, now she ends up with two x's on the number 7 in step 1. In step 2, now she focuses on the number 2 and the number 8 in her set of data. And she adds 3 to the number 2 and then subtracts 3 from the number 8. And in doing so, she ends up with two x's on the number 5 in addition to having two x's still on the number 7 uh, from step 1. And finally, in Catherine's third step then, uh, hopefully you can see uh, from the previous two steps that now we can just simply add 1 to the number 5. The inverse operation then would be subtracting 1 from the number 7. And now we are left with all four x's on the number 6, which would be the uh, balance point for that data set of 2, 3, 8, and 11. The final thing that we would have to make sure that we do then is draw in that black triangle underneath the number 6 representing the balance point of the set of data. Now what I would like you to do is take a look at uh, number 3. Uh, you are going to work on letter A on page 1076 and letter B on page 1077. Uh, with your group members, uh, what I would like you to do is recall the data sets for the number of points each player scored for the Olive Street Middle School. For each data set, determine the balance point on the number lines shown. Sketch the method to show how you determine the balance point. Then describe the steps you took to determine the balance point. So go ahead and do letter A for Josephine uh, and letter B for Shelly on the next page. So let's just make sure we go through this step by step. The very first thing that we are going to do is add 8 to the value of 4 to get 12. Now in order to keep balance, the next thing that I have to do then is subtract 8 from the value of 26 to get 18. Then I make sure I place an X above 18 in the number line. I also have to place an X above the number 12 from moving over uh, 8 spots from the number 4. Then in order to finish up, I would add 6 to the value of 6 in order to get 12. And to keep balance, I would subtract 6 from the value of 18 to get 12. So because there were already 3 data points of 12, now the number line is balanced. The balance point of the data set is 12. If you take a look at letter B for Shelly then, uh, her data set is 2, 3, 8, 17, 20, and 10. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is add 8 to the value of 2 to get 10. And then in order to maintain balance, you want to subtract 8 from the value of 20 to get 12. And then notice how I put the X uh, right above that first X in number 10 uh, when I added 8 to the number 2. The next thing that I'm going to do then is add 7 to the value of 3 to get 10. And in order to maintain balance, I'm going to subtract 7 from 17 to also get the value of 10. And then notice that I added those two x's above the number 10 in the number line. Finally then, the last thing that you have to do is add 2 to the value of 8 in order to get 10. And in order to maintain balance, you want to subtract 2 from the value of 12 to get 10. Uh, and then this is going to give you the balance point of the data set, which is 10, because you have all six x's above that number in the number line. Go ahead and turn to page 1078, and let's take a look at Shanice uh, for letter C. Go ahead and try to figure out the balance point again using that number line. Uh, the first thing you want to do for Shanice's set of data, she has 15, 12, 13, 10, 8, and 14. Uh, you want to add 2 to the value of 10 in order to get 12. And to maintain balance then, you want to subtract 2 from the value of 14 to get 12. This last step then that you have to perform is kind of tricky. 
Um, what you want to do then is add 4 to the value of 8 to get 12. And now in order to maintain balance, you actually have to perform two operations. The first thing you have to do is subtract 1 from the value of 13 to get 12, and then subtract 3 from the value of 15 to get 12. So you can see then that if you look at the plus 4 here, and then this is going to end up with your minus 4 right here. So those end up uh, being the inverse operations that you would have to perform for that last step. Uh, the balance point of the data set would then be 12. That's where you see all of the X's uh, on the number line. If you did have a little bit of trouble with this one, don't worry about it too much. Uh, we probably won't see very many like this. Uh, plus, based off of what we're going to talk about next, uh, we won't use a number line very much or the stacks very much with the cubes uh, since we'll talk about uh, figuring out uh, the balance point uh, using an arithmetic method. So you can see down at the bottom of page 1078, uh, it says the balance point can also be called the mean. The mean is the arithmetic average of the numbers in a data set. The mean is calculated by adding all of the values in the data set and then dividing the sum by the number of values. It says determine, determining the mean of the data set for the points Josephine scored is calculated by taking all of those numbers. You have 12 plus 12 plus 6 plus 26 plus 4 plus 12 gives you uh, 72 if you divide that by 6 because that's how many uh, numbers are in the data set, you would get 12 for your answer. It says that you can verify that the mean is 12 because the balance point of the data set on the number line is 12 as well. If you turn then to the next page, the top of page 1079, uh, what I would like you to do with your group members is number 4, uh, calculate the mean number of points scored by each player using that arithmetic method. Uh, go ahead and figure out the answer for Shelley and Shanice for letter A and B. So if you take a look at your answers for letter A and B, uh, for Shelley, if you add up all of the numbers in the data set, you would get 60. Divide that by 6, 10 points would be her answer. And for letter B, Shanice, if you add, all, add up all the numbers in the data set, you get 72. Divide that by 6 as well, 12 points for Shanice. Uh, that is going to be it today uh, for 16.1 and uh, analyzing data using measures of center. What I would like you to do to finish up for today uh, for homework, I would like you to do problem number 3 that starts on page 1079. And then I would also like you to do uh, the talk to talk activity on page 1080. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.